Hi, my name is Tammy Rowland, and I am the creator of the Work Smart Earn More system, and I'm delighted that you're here with us today. We're going to be talking about the Roland Dinoso productivity cycle, which I've got here, and we're going to go over the different components of it. I have sent you a copy of, um, or I will be sending you a copy of the description so that it's something that you can fall back on and, and go over every time you come up with a new project until you get it really glued into your head on how you want to work with us. What I know for sure is, is that I'm teachable and most of you are teachable. Um, everything that I've needed to learn, probably up until I was about 40 years old, I seem to learn the hard way. I, at least some things now aren't learned the hard way because I'm very attentive to what it is I'm trying to pick up and what it is I'm trying to learn how to do. Even as simple as learning how to do these videos or as simple as it may seem, believe me, it takes a lot of takes to put all this kind of stuff together. Uh, and having you know, a really good videographer helps. Um, what, I, what I know right now is, is that I used to believe that I didn't know much of anything. And if I knew something, you probably knew it too. So there was no value to it. And it took a while before I understood that each of us has specific gifts. And in that gift, we can share that with other people. And when we share that with other people, we've now given some value out. I'm glad to know that it's not the same just because I thought I had uh, the same thing that you had, that there couldn't possibly be value to it. Uh, recognizing and knowing that I may know something that you might learn and take and benefit from, it'll help you move forward in your business as well. Um, as a person who has worked really hard on self-improvement, self-growth, um, building my confidence, building my, my knowledge base so that I can be of more uh, value to you as well and that as our relationship builds you'll pick up more and more and more uh, tips on things that may be really helpful to you in your business as well. I believe that uh, your self-worth is not only based on who you are, but some of it comes from confidence that, that you gain from doing something until you've done it well. And that tends to build on who we are as human beings. And as it builds on our humanness, it, bu it builds on our personal value for who we are. If you have a project that you want to accomplish, it's nice to know that there are systems that you can put in place that will help you move forward. And in, um, in setting up your systems, each of them will be some kind of a step towards getting whatever it is accomplished. So having some kind of a system is always better to do it. And when I talk about the productivity, I, I, could, I started off with like seven steps and realized that simplicity was much better for you and honed it down to four steps. And we're going to go through each one of these steps one at a time and make sure you understand how to use them so that you can use them from now forward. And I've come up with a little bit of a a really short acronym that you can kind of keep going back to and see where you're at. Okay, so we're going to start off with the first step of the Roland Dinoso four-step productivity cycle. What I didn't tell you is, is why it's called that first. And uh, it's, it's the Roland Dinoso because I came up with the system, but I didn't actually recognize it as a system until my client, whose last name is Dinoso, um, said to me that he'd been using it over and over and over again because we'd set it up while we were working with him and his productivity and really working hard on him being able to stay focused and on track with what it was that he was doing. So I told him I'd give him the nod and add his name to it even though it was my system. Had he not pointed it out, it may have taken me a little longer before I noticed I had one in this area. So we'll start off with step one. And step one is to plan, and you'll see I've got pop here. Planning is about breaking down what the planning is, the organizational aspect of it, but also the prioritization. And you can't spend too little time in this area. If you don't take the time to, to do the planning properly, you're going to be racing ahead and you won't know what your next steps are. And the best way to figure that out is, is to take the time to know what is the big picture you're trying to do and then breaking it down somewhat. Break it down to uh, daily activities or each component of whatever your project is. And then does that component also have smaller steps within it as well? So when you know what that is, that'll help you um, Take it, take it forward in a really uh, methodical way. The organization, the organization of it will happen really well when you both understand what the full implementation you're going to need to set up. But if you don't know what your priorities are, you may be spending your time and your energy in the wrong place at the wrong time. So each one of these has a huge um, part of what your planning step is. You can't not know what your prioritization is 
and go ahead and get started because you, you may be doing the wrong thing first and the wrong thing last. And if you don't organize what that all is going to look like, you're going to have one heck of a mess on your hands. And what you may end up doing is coming to a full stop and there you are procrastinating again because you're not really sure what you're supposed to be doing next. And this will keep you on track. So if you know what it is that you're supposed to be doing, you'll just be taking another step. It's easy to sort of break that down and say, okay, where am I at? What have I done? What do I need to do next? So from there, we're gonna move into step number two. All right, step two of the productivity cycle is motivation. It seems pretty simple that you're motivated, you know what the project is you need to be doing, and of course you're excited and you're motivated. Except that if you don't break it down properly, it's so easy to get unmotivated. So the vision or the goal, which is what you're planning on doing, and if you add that with enjoyment, what is it that's making you um, have a good time while you're doing it? What is it you're excited about? When you add those two together, it gives you the enthusiasm. You can't make either parts of these um, less important. If you don't enjoy what it is you're doing, you're gonna, every day is a slog. Every day you're pushing yourself. And it's so much easier to be drawn towards something when you're having fun doing it and you know why you're doing it, which is what the vision and the goal is all about. If you know what your vision is, and we've done, uh, I, you know, I've done different teleseminars and videos on your vision creation, go back and look at those again if you've lost sight of why you're doing what it is that you're doing. And the goals, maybe, maybe you've taken your vision and broken it down to several goals, and each of those goals have several signposts so that you know where you are on your path. And back to the, you know, using your planning and making sure that you're in that pop stage, you've got all of that set up, you now are clear about what your vision is and what your goal is, you're excited about what you're doing, and you're enthusiastic. And that enthusiasm gives you energy and it feeds you and keeps you moving forward. If you're not fed by that energy, then what's going to keep you going when you're having um, a frustrating day? If you're not excited about what you're doing, you aren't going to be creative enough or open enough to look for what new ways can you do something when you know maybe your previous plan isn't working out quite as well or other things aren't falling into place or you have to take a step back and do something else that you thought needed to be done later but actually does need to be done now because sometimes that happens. Um, in your planning, you've done as much as you can in the uh, previous to it and with all of that planning, sometimes stuff still happens. So the enjoyment or the enthusiasm of the project is what's going to keep you on task and keep you motivated to keep moving forward. So we'll move on and we'll do step number three. For step three, what we're going to be talking about is action, which is focused attention. Action, it, there's a difference between any old action and focused attentive action. Any old action would be if I'm procrastinating at something, I might be doing something that's not really going to get me closer to what it is that I was doing. It might not even about, be about the project at all. So I want to make sure that it's very focused on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. Um, things will shift in the process of any project that you're doing. Things have shifted in making these videos. It's taken much longer than we anticipated. There's been a lot more time and preparation than we anticipated. We've had to, you know, reschedule a few times so that we could get everything done in one, in one shot. Everything takes extra time, or, which we have to make sure we allot for, but also things come up. So we have to stay in the flow, but also be flexible. Be flexible to whatever it is that's going to be coming into our day while we're in the middle of each of the different actions that we are taking that's very focused on what the end result is that we planned out originally. Again, the enthusiasm and the excitement is what's going to keep us going. And if we don't remember why we're doing this, we're not going to be able to stay focused on it. Consistency is huge. If we only pay focused attention occasionally, then it's going to take a really long time to get a project done. Maybe you had planned on it taking a week and then you looked at it and spent a bit more time on the planning and realized you should probably leave it, you know, 10 to 14 days to do something. That's fine if you stay focused on the actions that are supposed to take you forward or that will be taking you forward. So consistent action is what's going to make the difference for you in taking that project and getting it done in the timeline that you had planned in the first place. Okay, a fourth step and final step in this productivity cycle is to celebrate. And it seems like 
Why would you bother? What does that have to do with being productive? But if you don't take the time to celebrate what it is that you've accomplished, you won't have embodied it. If you don't allow for recognition, whether it's only you giving the recognition or if you're receiving it from someone else that you were doing a project with or for, then you're going to be negating all that you benefited and gained through the whole process of doing the project or doing whatever it is that you're staying productive with. Uh, what I know is that people who don't receive thank you and recognition well are typically not feeling so good about themselves. So their, their personal value or their self-worth is usually pretty low. Where you've gained a lot of um, knowledge in the process of doing whatever that project is, you've, learned, you've gained knowledge, you've gained awareness, there's been growth both in a learning perspective, but also you can feel good because you've learned something new. But if you don't take the time to celebrate it, you don't actually embody it. When you embody it, you take all of that confidence and knowledge and self-worth with you into the next project where there's going to be some things that you don't know about, some things that maybe are you're, again, needing to learn, new skills you need to, need to add, new information you need to add. And when you add those things on top of a previous learning and a previous um, raising of your self-worth, then it now brings you, uh, makes you a lot more confident, but it also makes you stand a little taller. It makes you feel a lot stronger and a lot better about who you are. The, the other thing I want to just go back to the word or to the uh, acknowledgement of thank you. If you find when people say thank you to you that you're very uncomfortable, um, don't, and often people will do the, well, it was nothing or it was no big deal, but it is a big deal. The best way to start getting good at, at acknowledging that thank you is just by saying you're welcome. Uh, and I appreciate that. Or really small, come up with a couple of sayings that you can say so that you can say it and then move on. But stop and breathe and smile when they say thank you and then take the acknowledgement. It's a full sentence. You don't have to add anything to it. Uh, if somebody says something to you, you can say thank you in return and just leave it at that. And you're going to feel much better about yourself as a whole because you've been able to start accepting some of that recognition from others. It makes a huge difference. And celebrate what you've learned today. And it may be something that's a refresher for you. It may be a whole new idea. It may be just a different way of looking at it. Most likely that's what it is, is it's just a different way of looking at it. I've written down, remember Pop Mac. Pop is the planning part of it, planning, organization, and prioritization, and Mac is motivation action and celebration. Taking the time to celebrate what you've learned today is important. You can't unknow what you already know. So celebrate that. Celebrate the fact that you show up for new learning and take in new information from new areas all the time and that you're willing to be a better person be better at your business, be better in all kinds of ways for yourself. I'm delighted that you've taken the time to do this today. There will be another video coming up that will be on productivity again. So be sure to click the link, um, download the productivity cycle that I'll send you. And uh, please, I, I hope you're enjoying the, in the incredible value that I'm giving you today. I love passing on the information, even if I'm still new behind the camera. And I'm delighted to be able to help you in any small way that will help you move forward in your businesses. And, you know, I wrote on here, that was fun. Let's do it again. It's simple. Don't make things complicated. Know that any new learning can be simple. And if you think of it as a simple thing and take the baby steps that it take, you won't get overwhelmed by any of it. And take a deep breath. And it's nothing huge, but it is a step towards working smarter and earning more in your business. I'm delighted again. Go to TammyRollingCoaching.com if you want more information about Work Smarter and More, and we'll be talking to you again on the next video. So live the life you love, love the life you live, and make sure that you're successful in all areas of your life, both your business and your private life. Talk to you soon. Oh yeah, before you go, uh, make sure you download the, um, the four-step Roland Genoso productivity cycle that was on the page for you. And please go and answer the three questions that are also below uh, and put the comments, one, two, three of them. I'd love to know what you think, what's going on and, and have a conversation with you. The questions are, what step has been your biggest challenge in the past? Because for a lot of you, uh, one of them is what you keep tripping up against all the time. Another would be, what action will you take to become much more productive than you already are? And that's always good when you can just choose one thing and say, that's what I'm going to be doing differently. And the third would be, how do you celebrate 
completion of a project, um, learning a new skill, anything that is, makes you feel good about yourself. Um, celebration is so important. How are you celebrating so far? Or how would you like to celebrate if you aren't already? Again, TammyRollandCoaching.com. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you again in a couple of days.